things that you should know before uh, considering starting any farm in order for you to succeed. I wish I know all these things. But for you all, you are very, very much okay. Make sure I watch this video to the end. I am going to share a few things that I've realized I've done it better, but no, I can't go back there. But for you, it is not too late. So make sure, please, watch this video to the end. And if you are new here, please do me a favor, subscribe to this channel. And for the returning subscribers, thank you so much. Without you, I'm nothing. So let's go direct into the purpose of this video. So, a lot of you may be, uh, that's the reason why you are watching this video, whether you are keeping chickens or you want to start uh, keeping chickens. There are a few things that you have to know before you start any kind of supportive uh, things. So the first thing you have to know, what kind of beds do you want to keep? Why do you want to keep the chickens? So most of the people were at, uh, most of the uh, times I get people say no, I want to start uh, uh, keeping chickens. So the following question I ask them: Why do you want to keep them? Why do you want out of them? So they'll say no, I want eggs. And I've seen some people. They want eggs and they're going to get the breed for meat. You know these chickens they have got breeds. We have got breeds for meat for eggs. And for dual purposes. So, uh, what you want out of chickens would uh, influence on what kind of breeds you are going to get. So, the first thing you have to know: what do you want from the chickens? Why do you want to uh, keep chickens? You want the meat itself, or you want eggs? Then, after you identify that, then that is going to. You now, the next thing to identify is what kind of breeds do I have to go with? In terms of chickens, there are a lot of breeds I'm telling you, but they are all classified in two, three groups. We have got the meat breeds, those are the heavy breeds. So meaning that all, all the feed that you are giving them is going straight into the meat, they are very heavy. They only come to your peoples. They are medium, they can give you quite a number of eggs and also they are heavy, but they are not heavy as those that are uh, for meat, like broilers. So dual peoples, they are in between. Then we have got layers. Layers, they are supposed to be right. They are not that heavy, because a lot of feed is supposed to be to go to egg production, not meat production. So those are the differences. So once you know what you want, you find out if you want to do it as a business, as especially do it as a business, have a recording, a book record at your farm and so on. So once you identify what you want, please look very best to bridge. You know the the layers, the exotic layers, they can give you maybe 310, 50 eggs, something like that. Then your peppers, the, the, the good layers, your peppers, those can give you somewhere between uh, 200, uh, or 180 to 250 eggs a year. That is annual. So, then after we have identified what kind of breed and what do you want from the chickens, then, I advise you to visit some farmers. Start with them. Let them tell you the bad side, the, the diseases, the challenges, and what how to overcome those challenges. You know, most uh, the devastating things, especially the chickens, feed feeding the chickens is very much expensive. So be able to talk to some farmers. How they've been able to cut the cost of the feed, how they are managing the diseases and so on. They will be glad to share with you. They will tell you everything you need to know about poultry. They will tell you how you can cut the cost of feed, what you can do in case of uh, low demand, and that is very, very, it is going to cost you nothing, but it is going to save you a lot of stress. Then, the other thing is start with the number you can manage to avoid the stress. 
if you can manage 50 broilers for 100 layers too that don't overstock don't bring 200 beds when your capacity is just 50 beds bring the beds that you can manage to avoid the stress so uh, it is better to have 50 beds and well fed good health and so on so if i've got uh, 200 beds and you can't feed them we will struggle for buying feed for them and so on so the results are they are going to get sick some are going to be stunted in their growth they are not going to grow as much as you want them they have a lot of different sizes a lot of competition because you don't have feeds to do to feed your chickens very poor weight and what will happen is that when you, especially for uh, beds for meats, when you want to sell those beds to the customers, now they are going to complain about the weight of the, uh, the, the, the your beds. Now they weigh. Immediately when you sell someone uh, the, the chicken, just using the hand, they will know that no, no, these chickens are very, very light and they are not suitable. And as a result, you are going to sell them at a very low price. And now in terms of egg production, they are not going to give you eggs as expected they will start very late to lay eggs you know uh, in your purpose they are supposed to start at uh, 20 to 22 weeks old they will be able to start giving eggs but for layers exactly layers they will start giving eggs if you will manage at uh, uh, 18 weeks so please do your research any bonus with any last way and then outside the wire. You know, they'll just keep on kept uh, picking on the chicken if they need to you know. The other thing is uh, do a market research before you embark on uh, what kind of breeds and so on. You know what the customer wants. They want eggs, find out. You know it is uh, it is a bit quite uh, difficult on this one because there are some products where uh, you don't know the, the 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 demand because that product is not present in that place and when someone has a product they all buy like crazy so find out the market do a market research go and ask if anyone even the, if you are for example keeping uh, beds for meat. You know, the, the, the very closest thing you can do, you can go to the restaurants. Just find out the restaurant. Why just one restaurant? Ask some questions. How many beds do they consume on average? Maybe per week or a day. And you'll be able to find out oh, The demand is size just that they don't know where to find the chickens. And they should just ask some questions if someone they find someone who is keeping their chickens maybe 100 a week or a month are you going to be able to buy all those chickens at this price and this price find out and by the time you gather those information then you start to be able to make a good decision on what to do and make sure uh, stick with one thing that's the other thing Focus on one thing, make it grow, then diversify to other things. For example, if you're keeping chickens for eggs, you know, I may be seeing here a lot of different breeds, but if you're keeping chickens for eggs, that is one of the mistakes I've realized. Try to keep everything at once. You know, there are pure peppers, breeds here for eggs and for meat, and we've got grave, uh, very chicken, the pure very chicken there. Also, ducks, skin fowls, rabbits at once. And that's, you are going to be master at nothing. Be master, nothing. Jack over trade and master none. So, if you are giving the chickens for eggs, let the people know that you, every time when they short of eggs, they think about you. Build a brand, that sort of brand. They know you for something, not for everything. Other thing I learned, you were not born to do everything, but you were born to do one thing right away. So make sure when you decide now you're going to keep broilers, make it big as possible. 
If you try us, make it big as possible, that's when you'll be able to that's why I do other things as well. As also make it that primer. No, and when you are your focus is mainly on one thing, you are more likely to make it than uh, spreading your wings too wide. You know, focus on gain fast, uh, rabbits, and so on at the same time, and you are still growing, that is not going to make the cut. So the best way to do is make sure focus on one thing make it a great one and you'll be good to go so, so the other thing i uh, wish i knew before starting is record you know record picking uh, will help you to make the decision and, and what you're doing is uh, or your business is profitable or not or maybe you're spending too much on feeds and then maybe you may ask what do i have to record you know the performance of the frog, frog density, how many chickens do you have, the feed prices, where you bought them, the sources also, vaccinations, in fact the expenses and the income, the sales. You know but there's this a farm of uh, a friend of mine, he was a farmer, so he also gave the birds a lot of feeds, the chickens will eat, Starting from the morning till evening, and there will be still some leftover feeds. And you know, when chickens they feed, they are satisfied, they start wasting feed, they start scratching their feed, and so on. So they start scratching a lot of water, and the, the feed was spilled everywhere. And I was like, Hey, so do you know how much you are spending on the feed? So, no, I have no idea, I don't even know, I don't even record. I just give my chickens and just make sure that it is food every time. And uh, to make things worse, because there was always feed in the feeders, it attracted rats, infowls from other people, and that might bring the diseases. And wild birds as well, they came to find food. They find to looking for food and to find it, and they always come back. So the third thing, uh, then uh, chickens were. Constantly sick, no, there was a lot of outbreak. You know, these wild birds, they are virus carriers, disease carriers. So they bring diseases to your chickens and uh, uh, pigeons from neighbors also will bring diseases to chickens. So you risk the, the health of your chickens. So make sure you uh, keep record of everything and the sales as well. So when you do the sales, especially if you are raising broilers. Know how much you are spending on feed. Then, when you make the sales on feed, know how much you are spending on feed, medication, transportation, everything you spend concerning chickens has to be recorded. Then, after you, you are selling, remove that expense, then you see the profit. Now, how are you going to know the profit if you don't record everything? You have not record keeping. Also, the, if you've got workers, you may include the workers attendant, and also the mortality rates. Find out what happens to the chickens, if it may be cowed, or there's any disease outbreak. The solution also, make sure then from every problem that you face at your farm. There will always be unpredictable things that may happen at your farm. So learn as much as you can. That would be very, very awesome and experience. Then move forward, learn from when whatever happens, and then move forward, learn by doing. You know, there are some people who are just learning, 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 and so on, and they have uh, paralyzed, they are, they are now afraid to start. So start, then start, then when things happen, find out why they happen and how to prevent them. So do that on record keeping. Then lastly, but very much important, please don't borrow money to start your farm. Don't borrow money to start your farm unless to expand your farm. Just borrow to expand, not to start. You know, when you're starting, a lot of things may go wrong. You don't know anything that's when you're starting. And no matter how much you have read, you know, visitors and farmers, there are still things that are going to happen that you do not anticipate that they are going to happen. A lot of money predict them. 
So don't borrow money to start a farm. Please start with your own money. As you know, gain experience. The most important thing that you can do is just gain experience. Then uh, you can expand now. You can borrow money to expand, not to start. Also, there's some farmers who borrow money to, to they just start building houses and so on for chicken houses and very expensive. Please use the viable materials that you can to build chicken house. No, most of the money should go to uh, chicken feeds. Thank you so much for watching and